good Tuesday morning. We've got more Jets drama that happened yesterday afternoon. Will it mean anything? Will Rob Sala actually pull the trigger and put in either Mike White or Joe Flacco over Zach Wilson, or is this a scare tactic? We also had a Monday night football game last night in Mexico City to talk about. Boomers 49ers. Sounds weird to say Boomers 49ers, but he's all over them. Boomers 49ers just heating up now at the right time. And today is Hunger Thon 2022. We're going to tell you about all the great packages you can bid on for Why Hunger. As we do this every year, we're looking to raise a ton of money for Why Hunger. We got so many cool experiences to detail. Okay, just one time. Okay, because I don't have time for this. Okay, just one time we're going to run through them. All right, so, I mean, sure, don't make me do this. So, uh, just one time we'll run through them. And everybody shut up. Uh, good morning, Boomer. How are you? you no, know, good morning, G. You know, it was um, Zach Wilson's name is resonating from sea to sh- shining sea, as they say. Yes. Everybody's talking about it. And Booger McFar- McFarlane last night said it was because he, he comes from money. He makes a lot of money. His family makes a lot of money. So therefore, he's entitled. He's never really been held accountable for anything. So uh, I don't. You agree with that? No, necessarily. I don't really agree with that. I think that's a, a bad take. I do know that Steve Young knows Zach Wilson and, and believes in Zach Wilson. And I'm not ready to give up on Zach Wilson, mm-hmm. but I am. I am one of these people who do want to hold him accountable. There's no question. And I think Rob Sala probably either got a little prod from the owner yesterday, or the general manager got a prod from the owner. I'm sure that he probably met with the team's leadership group, uh, whoever those guys are. I'm sure they've had some pretty frank discussions. Um, I know that one of the things that really irked a number of people uh, on the team and in the locker room was his uh, matter-of-fact way he went about things after losing to the Patriots. And maybe he didn't understand just how big that game was to the fan base and to the organization, which is really a uh, a mistake on his part. Um, so, you know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not ready to give up on him. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. But I, I want to see him bounce back this week in front of the home fans and against the Bears, a team that, you know, gives up a lot of points, a team that is struggling in their own right, and a team that may not have their starting quarterback, Justin Fields, due to an injury. That's right. So if that's the case, go out there and beat a team that you're supposed to beat in front of your home fans, and it's time to grow up. It's trying to be, it's, it's time. See, the thing is, for those of us who play the, the the sport and understand, you know, the enormity of what he is trying to do and all the pressure that he is dealing with, you know, we want to we want to understand and help him understand some of the things that he has to deal with in order to be successful. And a big part of that, especially at such a young age, is dealing with the heavy load of expectations that come with when, you, when you're the number 2 pick. And we've been talking about that in regards to Sam Darnold. We've been talking about that in regards to Daniel Jones and Mark Sanchez and on and on and on. Uh, And how you act uh, when you do have a bad game and say the right things, all the right things, and take it on your shoulders. And that shows leadership. That shows that you are secure in who you are as a player. And it shows maturity. And what we have seen out of Zach is probably more lack of maturity and we've seen a, a little bit of an insensitive take on things when, you know, everybody feels like Rome is burning down around him. So I, I think that this is a, a definitely it's a public wake up call without question. So if you're going to the game on Sunday and Zach has three or four ba- bad series, throws an interception and they're not scoring, uh, then I, I think that Rob Sala has just now opened the door to make a change within the game. Yeah, and he did that yesterday in the press conference. For those who might not have seen it, it was the first time ever that Rob Sala did not 100% commit to Zach Wilson, said everything's on the table, they're evaluating it, and he would inform Zach Wilson of it as well. So the way that he said this and said that he went and talked to Zach Wilson about this makes me think that the same way you're thinking that he's going to start the game and this was a scare tactic and this was a way to try to put some smelling salts in front of him and say, wake up, this isn't a game anymore. Like, this is now our careers, our livelihood, everybody else that's in this locker room. You can't be walking around here like a little punk, not taking accountability and playing like dog crap. You can't do it anymore, and we're not putting up with it. So we're going to give you another chance, but you're on notice type of deal. Like when Eddie got his, uh, brought the dog in and they made a file on him. Sort of something like that, you know. Where they're like, yeah. You know, we're putting you on notice if you ever do this again. Um, so I, I would love for them to start Mike White. I don't think that they want to deal with that. I really believe 
that if Zach Wilson were not the number two overall pick and these guys weren't tied to him like the way that they are, then Mike White would be playing. I don't think they want to deal with everything that comes with it, which means admitting a mistake and going with a guy who is not nearly as touted as Zach Wilson was and basically saying, we drafted someone who's not good enough. Because essentially, if you're sitting him down, you're saying that. And I don't think they want to deal with no, that right they now. No, they don't want to deal with that. I don't think they want to deal with that either. And, you know, again, internal politics, uh, you, know, you have to make sure you're not losing a locker room. You have to make sure that you're getting uh, across to your player. And that's why I, I said yesterday, you know, Rob Sala needs to sit down with uh, Zach Wilson and be hard with him and tell him, look, this is the deal now. Uh, this is what's going on. This is what's happening. You you know, you hear it, I'm sure. He's a social media kid. They they all are. They're all over the place uh, in terms of getting uh, information. And I'm sure that his teammates have been bombarded, bombarded over the last 48 hours uh, because of that performance on Sunday. So um, everything is kind of like heated up now in the Jet locker room. Uh, I think that they feel like they need to make the playoffs. I know that the ownership wants to make the playoffs. And they don't want to be held back because of one player's uh, immaturity or the fact that maybe one player's just not ready yet. Um, I, I am not like I'm not throwing him out. I mean, I, I know there are people out there like get rid of this guy. No, 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 no. Th- there are there are there are a number of people. I know I, there. Are, I'm saying I don't agree with that. No, either, I'm not, yeah. I don't agree with that. I what I what I want to see is I want to see, you know, the way that he played against Buffalo. Okay, was a really good game. It was a really solid game. And you go back and you look at the throws in that Buffalo game. They were good. They were on target. They were uh, they were accurate. He was into the game. He was planting his feet, and he was throwing the ball correctly. You go back, and then you watch this New England game, this the, the recent one. Man, he was all over the place. His feet were going one way. The arms going the other way. It's all about the arm angles, the slingshots, and all this other stuff where he just has to get back to throwing the ball the way that he can throw it. And I'm sure this week, uh, Rob Calabrese and uh, Mike LaFleur – are going to hold them uh, to the you know to the fire, if you will, when it comes to the fundamentals in the pocket and everything. He's got an arm. He's just he was so off last week, and he was so afraid to make a mistake that I I think that you know it's one of the reasons why uh, he, you know he missed so many balls. He was he was afraid. He was afraid to make a, a mistake. He didn't want to hurt the team that way. Uh, but ultimately, some of these passes that he threw were just were just god awful, and then. It's the post-game press conference that amplifies all of it and makes it even worse. Yeah, of course. And then the, I don't care whatever teammate came out and trotted out. They trotted out yesterday to talk about how much they love Zach Wilson and supported him. I mean, they were pissed. And the John Franklin Myers like tweet, he could say that that was a mistake. He was pissed. I mean, I, and I would be too. And I don't blame them for being pissed. They just don't want to create drama, uh, any more drama in that locker room. And I just remember. Last year when Mike White was playing, all the players that absolutely loved him and gushed about him, and it was just crazy how they were talking about him. And now you add that to the fact that Zach Wilson did what he did after this game and pissed off the entire defense. I think that that team wants Mike White to play. Well, the other thing I would say is that, you know, Zach, we now know what's going on in the building because your coach just basically came out and told us. Right. Yep, absolutely. And again, you know, you go back to last week prior to the game, and some of his comments, and some of his comments were a little loose, a little confident, uh, but maybe a little bit too confident, given the fact that, you know, he has struggled the entire season. And, you know, when they win, you know, he doesn't turn the ball over, but also um, the defense plays great and gets turnovers for themselves. And that didn't happen this past week, and it's one of the reasons why they lost. Yeah, if you go back to the first 20 starts, CBS Sports put this out yesterday, just to give you an idea where Zach Wilson is. Yeah. If you went through the first 20 starts with the Jets for Sam Darnold and Zach Wilson, I mean, the TD to interception rate, I mean, uh, Sam Darnold threw 28 touchdowns to Zach Wilson's 13. Now he threw more interceptions as well. But the... Uh, quarterback rating 78.9 to 70.7 completion percentage 59.7 to 55.6 like he's much worse than Sam Darnold was and I'm trying to find the I other feel like he has a better team than Sam Darnold R- right I mean he absolutely does so Zach Wilson completion percentage 2021 55.6 percent last in the NFL 2022 55 point 
6%, last in the NFL. Zach Wilson passer rating, 2029-2021, last in the NFL. 2022, 72.6, second worst in the NFL. I mean, just to give you an idea, I mean, we're sitting here and we, we see him make a couple of good throws against the Steelers and the Bills because we're comparing it to the worst quarterback play in the league. So when we see that stuff, we're like, oh, wow, he's actually competent. But, I mean, he's really not. So th- this is the type of stuff that I'm hoping that they're looking at and seeing, as Rob Sala said, this is not NFL football. I mean, he is statistically the worst quarterback in football. And now you know why the wide receivers are so upset. Now you know why Elijah Moore wanted to be traded. Now you know why Garrett Wilson went off at the end of the at the end of the game or after the game on Sunday. Yep. You know, they they want to, they want the balls being thrown to them. They want opportunities to make plays. And when they do have an opportunity to make plays, they are making them. Right. The problem is is that they're not and they've gone through a stretch here where it's been it's been about as bad a, a passing offense as there is in the league. And they have players as opposed to the Giants, you know, are losing players. Yeah. I mean, and the Giants are in a they're in a tough situation right now with the the injuries, a short week, the Cowboys and everything else. But yeah, I mean I there was another CBS sports tweet that compared him to everybody else in the in the league, and it was just it was so bad with Zach Wilson that I that I'll I'll find it at some point. But I just don't think that Rob Sala and Joe Douglas. Oh, here we go. Ready? Zach Wilson ranks this season out of 33 qualified quarterbacks. All right? Passer rating, 72.6, 32nd. Completion percentage, 33rd in the league out of there's 32 teams. He's 33rd. Pass the TD to interception ratio, 31st. Pass TD uh, attempts, 2.1%. 31st. You can't be worse than that. You, he's the worst quarterback in football. So, like, the point being is, I know you want to put him on notice. He got a shot at the playoffs. He had a shot at first place last week. Like, it's, it's not good enough. So, they, they could try to scare the crap out of him. It's time for a quarterback change. That's what it's time for. It is. Now, it doesn't mean that he can never play again. But this week, it's t- home game. It's time for a change. It's time to sit him down and say, I, this, "These are all the numbers, Zach. Look at this. This is not. This is not a fluke. I'm not making this up. You know, and a You're lot the of worst these, quarterback in football. And a lot of these numbers are coming uh, where he has a clean pocket. It's not like he's under duress. You know, they may be under a little bit of duress versus the Patriots, but for the most part, some of those passes on Sunday came when he was not under duress. Yeah, which and, is... that, and that's the and that's the that's the scary part of it." It is very, scary but I'm not like again. I, I've seen I've seen him make throws that are pretty damn good, man. And I, I go back to that that touchdown throw that he threw to Tyler Conklin in the first uh, New England game, and I'm like, that is a throw that very few players are going to be able to make. Are going to have the arm strength and the accuracy to be able to throw that ball exactly where he threw it and when he threw it. You know, who made and- a throw like that. Mike White against the Bengals. Same exact situation in the end zone. Okay. I, I, will, I said this the last time we were talking about Mike White starting, you know, in the beginning of the year when Zach was hurt and it was Flacco instead. I implore everybody to go back because you probably forgot about it and watch the highlights from that Bengal game. A team, oh, by the way, that went to the Super Bowl that he ended up beating. Now he got hurt after in the Indianapolis well, game. Well, that's, that's a Wasn't thing, the same. No. I mean, you Wasn't know, the same. I have to tell you. The, maybe the great thing about Eli Manning, he never missed a game, and that that's a thing. Yeah, like you you go out there and you get a you get the chance of a lifetime, and in the second game you get the chance to play, you get hurt. Yeah, I know. I Which mean, was you a shame. Can't, you cannot. I mean, he'd still be playing if he didn't get hurt. May, maybe he would be, but I, I all I know is that it 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 is imperative that they stay on the field and they do not get injured, and I and it's uh it it it's basically what. Well, it kind of derailed his career. Sure. He had a he had a chance there to steal something. He had a chance to go out and do it. And he did he did do it against the Bengals. And it looked like on that first series in Indianapolis that he was picking right up where he left off. Mm-hmm. And then he gets hurt again. And you know, that's another part of the whole dynamic. You know, and by the way, they know in the building if the guy is the real deal. 
if he has the goods. Mm-hmm. They, they already know this. Yeah. And there's something that is fascinating about Zach Wilson. There is. But there's also something that's completely frustrating. And and I think it's I, – I, I think it, it feels to me like it's really personality-driven. Yeah. I know I'd agree. And it does not mesh with this area, that's for sure. And it does not mesh with the other players in the locker room. All right, we did mention his Hungerthon today, 2022. We've got some great auction items up at hungerthon.org slash WFAN. Yes, some great packages, including you can co-host the Al and Jerry postgame podcast with the guys. You can sit in on our show, and you can sit in on Tiki and Tierney, sit in on Carton and Roberts. You can go to a Nets game with Evan Roberts. You can do – You got there's so many great packages up here at hungerthon.org slash WFAN, but we're really focused on the ones that – are open during our show. And by the way, our friends over at Casamigos, Leon Seidler and the group, they're going to match uh, 50 cents for every dollar that is raised. Uh, and, you know, just thank you to to those guys, Mike Meldman, Randy Gerber, and, of course, George Clooney. And our they're friend Leon Seidler. Leon Seidler, the Seidler, man, greatest. Awesome, awesome dudes. They're going to be right there with us all day long. So, uh, you know, now's the time to really raise as much money as we can through Hungerthon all day here on WFAN. Right. So if you... That's there right. Well, yes. the package is expanding because Casamigos is adding 50 cents to every dollar. <clears throat> so you donate a dollar, it's a dollar 50 because Lee Einsiedler wants it to be a dollar. Exactly. Uh, okay. So uh, that's what's going on here. We're going to, uh, throughout the day, uh, give you plenty of opportunities to get involved with Hunger. I mean, Fox. I'm thinking you, you, you got any Casamigos here today? I think just a shot in celebration, maybe? At the end, when we raise a bunch of money. How's okay. That sound? All right. Sounds great. All right. It is Boomer and Geo on the fan and CBS Sports Network. <laughs> 